We did a whole video on autumn photography tips, ways to capture really lovely, beautiful autumn photos using light, colors, textures, all that kind of fun stuff. But what about those times when you go out? You go out for an autumn photography shoot, but you come back and the photos, they're just, they're just not doing it for you, you know? You haven't got the colors. Nature hasn't quite provided you with those incredible autumn colors yet. The light maybe wasn't perfect. Well, no worries, because today, we're gonna go through how you can make a photo like this look like a photo like this, just using Lightroom. And then we can go further if you want with Photoshop, but I think today we'll just stick with Lightroom. So just doing some editing in Lightroom. We're gonna edit that photo together. Let's dive in. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now today, we are going to be diving into Lightroom where we're gonna be editing an autumnal photo. And like I mentioned in the intro, it's actually a photo I took a couple of weeks ago where the colors in the trees and stuff like that, they hadn't quite turned completely yet. Some trees had, but most of them hadn't. The light was good when I went out, but by the time I got to my location, it had kind of become a bit cloudier and the light was a bit flat. Not super exciting. So we're gonna go ahead and edit one of the photos that I took, which I was happy enough, at least, with the with the composition. I was happy enough with what I had. I was, I was looking around specifically for compositions that I thought I can do something with this in Lightroom. And I was trying, I've been trying to train my brain to think that way, to think of the edit before I've even taken the photo, you know, but to think of the colors and how I'm gonna affect the light and stuff like that. So anyway, without me rambling about all of that, let's go through exactly how I did this in Lightroom, let's dive right in right now. So I've got the unedited photo here, completely unedited. Uh, I wanna take a photo of this path here, but I needed to keep the angle not too tight, a little bit wider, just to make sure that I got a lot of those trees, the tree tops and the kind of foliage there in the photo, because that's gonna be probably the main part of this photo. The light, as you can see, is not its not super bad. It's not super flat. We've got quite directional light from the right coming in onto this path, but I wanna emphasize that. I wanna have some light in the trees. I've exposed as much as I can for the highlights a little bit, just so they're not completely blown out. But it means that a lot of this photo is dark, so we need to balance that. We need to do colors. We need to probably recrop and frame. It's just, you know, there's a lot to do here. So we're just gonna dive in and get right to it. Now, first things first, I'm actually gonna scroll down on the right here. I'm gonna come to the Transform tab. I'm gonna click Auto. Lyrum's gonna straighten this up for me. Absolutely spot on, perfect. Now we're gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna actually crop this before we even get started with anything else because I cannot stand how much of foreground there is in this shot. I just can't stand it. So we're gonna change that. I know what you're thinking, but you took the shot. That's fine, don't worry about it. We're gonna edit it out, just don't worry about it. So let's get into it. Let's let's go for a four by five crop uh, because Instagram and Let's really bring this up so there's just not too much of this path. I'm even gonna, I'm even gonna do this just so the edges of the path are kind of the edges of the photo. I'm gonna move this over to center that path. The tree's kind of perfectly aligned on the rule of thirds. Lovely. Let's let's hit done. There we go. So we've got a very sort of top heavy photo, but I actually quite like it. I like the kind of uh, the height of the trees, you know? Now next we need to work on this exposure a little bit. So first of all, I'm actually gonna bring the, ex the overall exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna drop the highlights to try and preserve some of that, some of that tree. We might come back to that in a moment. And I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit as well. Texture up, clarity up. Not too much, probably just plus two. Texture's gonna give us a nice bit in those trees and keep those kind of leaves and, is this some sort of pine? I don't know, I don't know enough about trees, but it's gonna give us a nice bit of sort of clarity without going crazy with the clarity slider. Next, we're gonna bring that vibrance up because I want the colors in this to really pop. And then I think we're gonna bring the blacks up just a little bit as well. Okay, great. I think this already looks better. Let's see a before and after, which you can do by pressing the backslash key on your keyboard. This was before and this is after. So we've made some pretty decent exposure changes, I think. Uh, let's even just bring the whole tone curve up a little bit like that, but bring it further down towards the bottom. So we're bringing the shadows up a little bit more. Now there's three things we're gonna use to color color grade this photo. We've gone through color grading before. In fact, we've got a whole video on color grading, but there's three main 
things we're gonna to use to color grade this photo the way I want it to look. We're gonna use the HSL slider, that's gonna be a big one. We're gonna use white balance, that realistically is gonna be a big one as well. And then we're gonna use split toning to add a bunch of orange into the highlights. And then we're gonna go ahead and make local adjustments. We're gonna start with those three and see how well we can do. So let's bring the greens down towards the yellow. Let's bring them all the way. Let's bring the yellows towards the orange a little bit. Let's just back off a little bit of the greens there. And let's bring the oranges down a little bit as well. Blues, I like to just move a little bit, the aqua and the blue both towards each other, just with just with the teal look a little bit. It's not gonna make much of a difference at all in this, in this photo, but I like to just give it a little bit of a go. Now, in the split toning, I want to just put the hue for the highlights into a sort of an orange, and then bring that saturation up. And you can see when I do that, we are really starting to cook with gas now, and we've got quite a lot of those warm tones in our photo. Now, speaking of warm tones, before we touch the saturation or the luminance within the HSL tab, let's scroll up and play with this white balance a little bit. Let's bring the temperature up, give it a warmer tone. And let's just play with this tint a little bit. If we bring it towards the green, or the magenta, I don't really like doing either, but I am gonna bring a little bit more towards the green. And then let's actually scroll all the way down to the bottom here. On the way, let's stop at lens corrections. Let's just enable profile corrections. And let's, right down at the bottom, we've got the calibration tab. Let's bring the red primary over towards the orange a little bit and the blue primary over towards the teal a little bit. That's gonna probably help the oranges to just pop out a little bit more. Let's bring the blue primary back just a touch. Something like that. Okay, so we've already made pretty huge difference now to the colors. Let's see the before and after. So we've already really kind of autumned this up. If we're going too fast in any of this stuff, we've actually got a full video all about color grading uh, in Lightroom. We've got a full video on that. So I'll link that down in the description so you can go check that out if you want, if some of this has been a little bit too fast because we go into way more detail on the calibration tab, on the HSL tab, the split toning, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for this one, we're gonna go at reasonable speed just because I feel like there's actually quite a lot we need to do to this photo, which is perhaps not ideal, but you know, it's a good test for editing abilities, isn't it? So now what I want to do is actually change up a couple of things about the exposure here. I want to use a radial filter. So I'm gonna select that there. I'm gonna double click on effect here just to set everything back to zero. And I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna drag out a kind of radial filter here We've got inverted turned on, which means that anything we do here is gonna affect what's inside the circle. So let's just bring the exposure up and the dehaze, I wanna bring down just a little bit. I like to use that to simulate kind of sunlight. And then let's click new. Let's make another one about that sort of size. Let's, let's actually bring that down a little bit. It doesn't need to be that big. Let's turn invert off so that's not ticked. Now it's gonna be affecting everything outside the circle. Let's bring the exposure down a little bit. I think that's okay, isn't it? I think that's good. Let's just bring it down to about there. So we've really now focused the, the core of the image. The subject is down this path. Now let's come down here and what I want to do is actually just add a bit of a vignette as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna add that in on the effects tab here. Brilliant, so that's now really darkened a lot of the image other than right down the end there. So let's see the before and the after. Okay, I like that. We can always come back to those as well. If we click on the radial filter here, we can find the little uh, kind of dots here on the photo and we can go in and we can edit those. So if we find that was too dark, we can bring that back up or we can make it even darker. Let's press Control Z to undo. Actually, if I'm honest, I didn't mind how uh, dark it was when it was super dark, but we're, we're gonna come back to that. I, you know, you can easily get carried away with this kind of stuff. Next, I wanna bring a graduated filter onto the photo coming from the right. And that's because we've got directional light clearly coming from the right. That's what's giving us these nice shadows across the path. So let's bring that in. We've got no effect on it so far, but if you press O, you can see where the mask is. And then let's bring the exposure up and the dehaze down. And that kind of gives us 
Let's bring the orange in there as well, a little bit for the color temperature. And that kind of gives us this feeling of sunlight coming in from the right. It warms up the image nicely as well. And it gives us a little bit of an exposure bump to boot. So there's loads going on there. Next, I want to just actually use an adjustment brush here. Again, I've got no effect, but if I had, I could double click effect just to reset all of this. And I want to paint in some light, some sunlight. So we can use a flow of, I'm going to probably go to about 66. I think that's about right. Now flow, if you don't know, is going to affect how kind of quickly and how strong we are painting this on, which means we can paint over our, what we've already painted to kind of build it up. And it means that we're not going all in straight away. We can build this up and, and make that make that work for us. So let's let's do this by bringing the exposure up That's and the dehaze down. And we're gonna paint in some sunlight here. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go across where I think the sun would be essentially shining down onto these kind of bits on the path here. Now, if you want to see exactly where you've painted, you can press O and you can see this mask. So you can see what we've done here. We can then press O to remove that. And then we can we can tinker about with this a little bit further. Now, I think dehaze works pretty well, if I'm honest, because it essentially it gives you that feeling of sunlight going through kind of dust and that kind of stuff. I want to press and hold Alt. And that is going to give me the kind of the, the brush to actually remove, to erase some of this mask. And with a lower flow, I'm going to go down to a flow of about 45. I'm just going to try and paint out where I think some of this sunlight wouldn't be hitting and make it kind of feel like rays. Let's press O. Let's, uh, let's get rid of it there. And that's going to feel a little bit more like maybe like rays. Now let's press done. I think that looks pretty good. Let's turn that off actually. Let's turn that off and on. So I can press the adjustment brush. I can come back here to where the dot is on the on the actual photo. I can select that and that's gonna select that mask. I can turn that off by just clicking this little toggle down here. So that's off. Let's turn the mask off so we can see what we're doing. That's off and that's on. I like it. I want to just bring up the effect a little bit. Not like crazy but just a little bit. I've added a little bit of warmth there as well. So let's turn it off and turn it back on. Brilliant. I think that's doing, I think that's doing some pretty good stuff. Next, I'm actually going to go ahead and use a graduated filter. So I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna double click effect. I'm gonna drag that up from the bottom and I'm gonna bring the exposure down. That's gonna darken that first bit, that very bottom foreground element to our photo, which I think makes the next bit kind of pop a little bit more and it works pretty well. I'm then going to bring in another graduated filter from the bottom left to kind of contrast with that sunlight. And I wanna make that darker so that essentially we've got sunlight coming in from the right and darkness coming from the left. It really accentuates that sun. Let's click done. And I think this is looking pretty good if I'm honest. Let's press the backslash key that was before that was how we started. That wasn't even fully how we started to be honest because we also had the crop that we did. And this is after. So I think we've made a huge difference to this photo. So let's export this now as well because I never show that bit of the process and someone rightly pointed out in the comments, that would be quite helpful. So let's definitely do that because I think it is helpful. Now in this situation, I'm only exporting one photo. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and right click. I'm gonna click export and I'm gonna click export. Uh, I'm gonna, I've selected my folder, which is named in a way that only probably I would ever understand <laughs> and be able to find. Uh, but otherwise, I'm essentially going to export this as a JPEG. I set the quality to 100 because, uh, to be honest, I think I'm probably a little bit ridiculous and I, I overdo it and I end up with these huge file sizes. But I like to keep the quality there. If I was worried about file size, I'd probably bring this down to about 70. I think 70 is absolutely fine. I think it's a good compromise between 
absolute full resolution quality and then file size. So I think 70 works really well. Um, like I say, I tend to keep it as 100 just because that means that then whatever I want to use it for, I've got these full res images. And if I want to use a smaller version, I can do that as well. I can I can either bring it down in Photoshop or I can just come back and export it again at a slightly lower quality. You can also limit the file size, but I don't really see the need to do any of that myself for most of the things that I'm actually doing. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm not using output sharpening. I'm not watermarking it. Um, I'm not really doing much at all. I'm pretty much just setting it to quality 100 and exporting it as is to my folder. So I'm not going to because I've actually already exported this photo, but then I would just click export and we'd be done. Now, I love editing photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. I think it's probably one of my favorite parts about photography, I just love it. And I specifically love taking photos that look not great, kind of rubbish, and making them look like decent, good, maybe even pretty good. It's probably one of my favorite things. Uh, I appreciate this is not for everyone. So a lot of people I know like to get it as perfect as possible in camera. And to be honest, if the light's not good or the colors aren't there, then don't take the photo and come back another day. And I totally, totally understand that. And I generally would probably do the same thing myself. There's nothing, nothing beats getting the right light, getting the colors you want to go for. Absolutely nothing beats it. it. You can't shoot in the middle of the day and then make it a sunset in post. We well, probably can't, but it's gonna look, it's gonna look ridiculous. So with that in mind, this is just something that I like to do to kind of challenge myself, to push myself as a, I think as a photographer, because if I can make it look like this in Lightroom, then I can learn exactly what I needed to have gotten out of it when I was there taking the photo. So obviously I need a different light. I need to wait probably a couple of weeks for the colors to change a little bit. But I think it's an interesting exercise to try this out. And sometimes you can't get the photo that you wanna get. Sometimes it's just not gonna happen. So it's useful to also be able to do something like this. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you wanna see a list of the kit, that's all down in the description. Any other tips as well about Lightroom editing or Photoshop editing or anything that we've gone through here, absolutely pop it down there as well. I love reading through all that stuff. Of course, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe because Ooh, that helps us out. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.